This is the 10 o'clock news with Nigel Newsman. It's Monday the 1st of February 1990 something we think and these are the headlines. It's war, yes war. All the world's prominent militaries and France have launched attacks on each other. Battles are raging on land, air and sea simultaneously from Alaska to the Sinai Desert. Earlier the Prime Minister broadcast this message. Stay home and stay safe. Don't travel into any war zones unless you absolutely have to for essential shopping. If you do travel, try to remain two meters away from any bombs, and this you're consuming a substantial meal. Also in the news, your premium account has expired. What does it mean for you and your earnings? After it expired, I lost everything. I can't even afford to repair my vehicles. A recent naval recruitment drive is failing, say critics. What does this mean for our outdated naval forces after years of under-budgeting and few modern advancements? And later, our research team investigates Russian bias. What is it, and should we be afraid? If you or a member of your family has been affected by Russian bias, why not write to us here at the BBC with your story, or post aggressively on a forum. But first, it's time for the weather with Nigel Thunderman. Nigel! Thank you, Nigel. Yes, I'm afraid it's more of the same this week. That's right, bright and sunny all day, every day, with little to no chance of rain or night time. I mean, we don't understand it, but then it looks bloody great out there. Look at those clouds. Almost look real. Thanks, Nigel. Yes, I've never seen the night time before either. Back to our main headline this evening, war. Reports of small simultaneous battles are filtering through from around the globe. We now go live to our German correspondent, Nigel von Krautmann, live from Berlin. Viewers are advised this footage may contain flashing imagery. Nigel, there are disturbing reports that the city of Berlin is in ruins as a result of the ongoing battle. Oh, what on talk, Nigel? Actually, all of this damage is really, really quite old. In fact, if you look behind me, you'll be able to see some really quite remarkable architecture. In fact, this battle has already been raging for around 11 minutes, so it's almost over. And who is it that the German army is fighting, Nigel? It is the Russian pigs, the Americans, the French, the Swedish, and the Chinese. It matters not, for the supreme right of the Reich's Germany's Air Force will not be outclassed. Yes, we've seen imagery showing 50-year-old German jets in combat over the battlefield, but interestingly, no civilians have been seen anywhere. Now, tell me, Nigel, how is that possible in a city the size of Berlin? Every single one must have been evacuated. You'll see, the Reich's and Germany's rail network and transport infrastructure is most efficient line of your... Thanks, Nigel. Viewers are advised not to be disturbed if they didn't see the Berlin Wall in that footage, as we believe it was brought down back in the early 90s, whenever that was. Now back to our main headline this evening, the war. We're now joined live from Washington by General Chester Arthur MacEisenhower. General, how did this war start? One word, weapons of mass destruction. We tried invading that Iraq, but I couldn't find no map for it. So we went and invaded the goddamn Swedish instead. Then the commies came in claiming Sweden was on their border. But Russia ain't anywhere near Europe. Let me stop you there, General. Uh, nobody has a nuclear capability. Well, shoot. We've got proof that says the enemy has WND launch sites at Stalingrad and Kuban. The battle of which has been dubbed the Kuban Missile Crisis. General, thank you. Say, y'all got some of them WNDs there in London? Now, coming up later, we America have- America will liberate your country. Now, coming up later, we have an exclusive interview and first-hand account with a British pilot who dropped bombs on Spain and then parachuted out, never to be heard from again until now. From the air, the target appeared to be what I'd call a series of normal buildings. I dropped my bombs and couldn't be bothered to fly back to base and rearm, so I bailed out. All that and more later. But first, joining me live in the studio is our very own Level 100 Field Marshal, Nigel Montgomery. Field Marshal, why did Britain join this war? Well, it was because the Americans asked us to. I see. Now, reports of troop casualties have been well into the tens of thousands. Uh, Field Marshal, how many soldiers have actually died? Um, none, actually. What? Yes, that's correct. Although triage centres are overflowing with the unconscious and the knocked out, nobody appears to have died. 
I spoke to a junior tank crewman who was shot in the face by a high-velocity round from an Abrams at the Third Battle of El Alamein, and he was very lucky to only be rendered unconscious by it. Well, whilst we're on the subject of the Third Battle of El Alamein, what went wrong this time? Well, you see, we were right up against it. You see, we were completely outnumbered by the Russians. But evidence suggests that both sides had equal amounts of tanks at the start of the battle. Russian bias. Field Marshal, thank you. And now it's time for our traffic report where you are with Nigel Ringroad. Hello there, Nigel. It's a very busy day out there today. If you're travelling in southeast England, you might face some delays as the Second Battle of Britain rages ahead and queues into Kent are quite long indeed. Hang on, what's that beeping noise? Back to you, Nigel. Back to, back to you, Ni back to you, Nigel. Stay safe out there, Nigel. That's all from us. Join us again tomorrow for a Panorama special report on the worldwide use of child soldiers by all sides. According to the latest Peggy dating, children have no place on the battlefield until they're 13 years of age. And for more updates on this massive war, you can support this channel over on Patreon. Bye for now. Hang on. What's that whistling noise? Sounds like a bomb. No, it can't be. This building has no military significance whatsoever. Hardly a bombing point, is it? Random. Like, what the hell happened there? Our plane, like, exploded or some shit like that? I know we're floating on some minging old furniture in the sea, Gus. You should be careful, blood. My sister says you can get, like, woodworm or dementia or something like that from old furniture. Like, I'm not even lying. No way. I'm allergic to woodworm. For real. I've got, like, a note from a GP and everything. Hang on. Are those like sharks or whales or dolphins or what? Them sharks for show. Sure. I've seen them on David Attenborough. They's like well scary. I think we're like going to need a bigger boat. Or some shit. It's okay cuz, I use Surf Shark. Surf Shark? Is that like some brand of rifle or harpoon or something we need? Get with it. Surf Shark is like a virtual private network. You can like protect your data online. You know from data theft, tracking, surveillance, commercial targeting, all this and that and everything. You can connect to a specific country, a static IP, or use this whole feature called like multi-hop, which allows you to connect via two different countries all at once. You know, like for holics to layer protection or something. But like, how's that help us out here, fam? It's got like this no borders mode, so you can access region locked content like wherever you are in the world. Like the whole world? No way. I swear my name's life and everything in this and that. So I can watch Fury on Netflix right now, or like when I'm flying my bomber over Germany or Italy or whoever it is meant to be a war with. Safe. That's right, it keeps you safe from, like, adverts and malware and fishing. Standard! My dad always wanted me to go fishing, but I was like, no way, man, because catching fish is for poor people who can't afford to go chippy. It's also got, like, well good encryption, like, industry-leading AES-256 GCM encryption. That's a lot of numbers. You know I've got, like, dyslexia or some shit? I've got enough from my mum and everything to prove it. That's why I never did, like, maths or geography or whatever. Why don't you go to, like, surfshark.deal slash squire and use the coupon code squire for, like, 83% off and three months free? That might help with, like, your disability or whatever it was? They have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Link in the description. Isn't it? Isn't it though? Isn't it? Isn't it though? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it?